<laughs> okay, so uh, today I'm making a chili, a raw vegan chili. And uh, that's because the weather, although it's not too bad, you can see it here, it's been raining a lot, which is something that it likes to do here on the Big Island, um, along with the sun, so don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. Um, anyways, it's kind of chilly out today, uh, Hawaii-wise. It's been raining, it's probably going to rain the rest of the day. Uh, hubby's out doing construction work, he's going to be starving when he gets home. So I'm going to do a chili, and we're going to start with the herbs. I just got some fresh uh, basil, oregano, thyme, rosemary. We chop those up. And put them All right. In. So, <clears throat> as I said, you start with some herbs. I diced up my own fresh herbs. It's a really nice-sized handful of whatever I happen to find in the garden. You could do the same, or just throw in some dried ones if you have them. Whatever you like. Don't be shy with them, though. They're what's going to help make it tasty. Next, we're going to cut up some uh, tomatoes. I've got little cherry tomatoes. You can use whatever you want. Um, I'm using probably about two cups worth of cherry tomatoes. And uh, we're putting them right. in there now. Changed positions here. Um, and I've got the tomatoes done, as you can see. So I've got tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, and fresh herbs in the bowl. Um, I got about a half of a cup of sun-dried tomatoes that I'm going to work with next. Let me move these mushrooms out of the way. And basically I'm going to use some scissors, but you can use <coughs> a knife or whatever. I'm going to make these into very small pieces, and then I'm going to go ahead and put them in this warm water right here so that they can uh, kind of, well, actually quite a bit soften up. I don't use the sun-dried tomatoes that are in um, oil because if I use any oil at all, I'd like to be in charge of how much is put into my foods. So, um, I, I either sun dry them myself, um, or I buy them from the health food store without any oils or any other additives. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to cut these, put them in the warm water. I've also got uh, some cremini mushrooms, one leftover shiitake from last night's dinner, and um, a couple big button mushrooms here. So, I don't know, one, two, three, four, I'd say eight mushrooms or so, eight cremini mushrooms if that's what you're going to use, um, six if they're really big, like those ones, more if you're going to use smaller mushrooms like uh, shiitake, kind of whatever you like. This is going to be the meat, let me do the quotes, the meat of the meal. So, um, if you don't like mushrooms, you can use... Uh, Let's see, what can you use? You can crush up some walnuts and use that as the meat. Um, you can uh, sprout some buckwheat or some quinoa and use that. Um, or you can just not use anything at all. It's really totally up to you. We love mushrooms, so that's what we use. Um, anyway, I'll be back after these steps. Now that I've thoroughly made a mess here on my cutting board, I'm back. I've got my uh, sun-dried tomatoes. As you can see, they're very small. The water is warm, but not too warm. I can easily fit my hand in there. And they've been soaking for probably almost a half an hour now while I've been uh, chopping some stuff up. Um, on top of this, I went ahead and put the mushrooms in here. As you can see down here, we'll see them better when we mix it up. And then I also chopped up a half cup each of uh, thinly chopped celery, carrots, and bell peppers. Just for some added texture um, and also for some goodness. Up next, basically, is all the spices and um, stuff that puts it together and makes it into the chili that it is. So um, I'm going to go gather that, and um, we'll put it all together. Okay, so these are just the seasonings that I'm going to put in, knowing what my husband likes. Um, you can put in whatever you want, whatever you think is going to make it taste delicious for you guys, you know, you and your family, or just yourself. This, to start off with, is just one tablespoon of... Uh, I use Bragg's, but you can use Nama Shoyu or whatever the case is. And then we're also going to do a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Organic, of course. <laughs> I'm using two different kinds of vinegar here. Uh, one tablespoon of balsamic, one tablespoon of apple cider. So if you don't use balsamic, just double up on the apple cider. Um, you can use really any kind of vinegar. It's just to give it a little bit of pungency. And I do not usually do this, but I'm going to add uh, two tablespoons of olive oil to the mix just to give it a richer consistency. Um, 
Actually, my husband just called not too long ago, and he is stuck at the job site doing construction for an extra three hours or so today. So he's going to be even hungrier than I thought. Um, I'm actually going to make some mango guac wraps to go with this chili. So lucky you. You get to hear me go um and um <laughs> and uh, through yet another recipe before we're done here today. Um, anyway, besides those, we're going to be using two Hawaiian chili peppers, but you can use red pepper flakes, you can use chili powder, any kind of chilies you want and as much as you want to get the desired, uh, of course I pushed the wrong yeah. button, anything uh, that will help get you that spiciness that you want. And I'm using garlic powder and onion powder. And uh, the reason for that, I usually do use fresh um, onion and garlic, ginger and all that, but I do use the powders in recipes like the chili because it gives it like a richer, um, more intense, almost like a cooked smoky flavor and that's kind of what you're looking for when it comes to chili. Um, I'm also going to put cumin of course, can't forget that. And I'm probably going to put a half a tablespoon of each to start and then go from there. It really is up to your flavors. So I'm going to do that and then I will come back and stir it with you and um, that's about it. Uh, make sure that you know what the ingredients are in case you want to try it and uh, it's going to marinate and uh, we'll see what hubby thinks. Um, okay, so this is it. Um, all mixed up. It smells really good. I haven't tried it yet. I just thought I'm going to go ahead and let it um, marinate for a while. But this is what we've got just to be clear. We've got about two cups of cherry tomatoes cut into little pieces, little bite-sized pieces as you can see here. Very small. We've got um, about a half a cup of uh, sun-dried tomatoes that are cut into very small pieces and soaked in probably about a half a cup of water, um, warm water. And we have got a half a cup each of chopped celery, carrots, and bell peppers. We've also got about eight cremini mushrooms chopped up in there. We've got a handful of fresh herbs. And then we got some spices. We got a half a tablespoon of garlic powder, onion powder, and cumin. We've got two tablespoons of olive oil and one tablespoon each of apple cider vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and a little bit of shoyu. Um, and then we've also got the chili peppers uh, to, you know, your spice likeness. This is going to marinate a good, well, two or three hours. But I'd say it's probably ready to eat within an hour. You really want, if, if you can see down here, when I put the tomatoes in, I put the water that they were soaked in because this gives it a really thick juice, as you can tell. As this marinades, um, all the vegetables are going to start really soaking up that juice. Um, and this is going to really turn into that thick chili, you know, that, that people love so much. At least around here. I don't know if you guys like it a lot. Um, it's about time to, you know, the end of the winter season is here. It has gone. Um, summer's coming this is not going to be a big commodity soon so now's the chance to make you know the last minute chilies stews and soups that type of stuff before we start getting those you know wonderful summer pastas and salads and you know I don't know about you but I like to eat seasonally and I like to eat uh, the way that the, the weather permits so when it's cold or nasty it's fun to have you know nice comforting warming foods uh, when it's hot and sunny it's really good to have those cool you know, refreshing foods that uh, give you the extra water and, and all of that kind of stuff that you need. I'm blabbing now. Don't ask me why. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to let this marinate for a while, clean up my mess, and then I'm going to make some mango guacamole to put in some romaine wraps and uh, show you how that comes together. And then we'll see um, how it all tastes. So, uh, talk to you later. So, here is that chili after it's been sitting and marinating for uh, a couple hours now about two hours. Um, hubby should be home within the next 45 minutes. Can't wait to see what he thinks. I have to admit I've given it a try and it has this uh, crazy array of different flavors and they all hit, seem to hit you at a different time which I think is really awesome. Um, one of the things that I've never truly liked too much about chili uh, growing up was that it all kind of I'm going to put the top on come show you why I'm making the chili. It's nice and rainy out here. Yep. A couple dark clouds. 
Anyway, um, growing up, you know, uh, the chili that we ate, which was any kind of chili, whether it was homemade, canned, or whatever, always tasted the same to me. I mean, it was all the same flat flavor. Um, I think that's why people use things like bread and and crackers and people put hot sauce, extra hot sauce, and, you know, uh, people use cheese and sour cream and they dress it all up. You know, obviously the, the flavor of the chili itself isn't enough. I'm thinking that uh, this might be a little bit different. And that's, again, uh, something else that I love about raw foods. There's so many different things I like, and, and I kind of give you guys a lot of uh, my opinions as I do my videos. But this is yet another one. Um, it's an instance where I think the raw version is way better than the cooked version's ever been. Um, you, you can't miss anything like the beans or the meat or whatever that goes in regular chili. I don't think. And, um, you know, the spice is a lot richer in terms of you can actually... Uh, feel it develop on your tongue as you taste it and so um, again I'm excited to see what hubby thinks so I'm gonna clue you in on that so uh, oh yeah and I did not get you. a chance to even think about doing the mango guac wraps today so hey it gives me something uh, to shoot tomorrow since uh, it's been so long I mean sometimes it gets to the point where it's been so long you don't even know where to begin and you just think about not doing it again at all that's not an option though um, as my friends and family and uh, around here and my friends over on YouTube keep telling me so a uh, good thing that I have some stuff in mind although that's about it so I guess I better get to cranking uh, that noggin of mine up there <laughs> I better go grab the oranges there he is over there finishing his bath and I'm waiting patiently for him to try the chili. Okay, <laughs> so here it is with all its goodness. I already told you what's in it, and you actually watched me make it, so I won't beat, beat that to death. And uh, he said it looks good. Mm -hmm. looks really let's, good. Let's see. And this is coming from somebody that does not like raw tomatoes. What do you think? It's really good. It is? Yeah, the flavor is good. It's got perfect spice. Good. Mm -mm. Right on. That, I know that's awesome. not going to be near enough to fill you up, but I got a lot more where that came from. So, okay, thanks, honey. Love you. <laughs>